So we back with another video. Today we got y'all boys with another video on the NFL channel. Now with that being said, we're going to be going over here and tier listing again the NFL teams. Now, like I said, in the coming weeks, once we get to that mid-season form, we're going to be re-ranking the QBs, the running backs, the rival receivers. You guys do want that. Just make sure to smash the like button. But today we got y'all boys with the defenses. We're going to give y'all a mid-season ranking of the NBA, or not the NBA, but NFL teams overall as well. So if you guys do want that, make sure to drop a like. But yeah, without further ado, no more talking. Let's hop into it. Okay, so hopping into it, we got the same tiers, best for the best defense in the league. Elite for the pre pretty much the teams that's going to be elite for the year. And then we have good, mid, pretty much not bad or good. And then we have teams that are just bad or trash, whatever you want to say, that this down the third. So let's hop into it. First team, the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, when it comes to their defense, honestly, I would say it's been good. It's not been elite. It's not been mid. I would say it's been good. It's been a good defense. The Patriots. Now, the Patriots is a team that's really interesting to talk about because I feel like injuries have done a big deal on this uh, defense, especially as a Patriots fan. But even still, if I'm being honest, it's only so much we can go for. Um, last week, we had a pretty good week against the Bills. This week, we played the Dolphins. They had a, a touchdown at the very end, so we really only allowed like 20-plus points for the majority of it, but they did end up getting a 30 ball. But that is the Dolphins, who I honestly think is the best offense in the league, really. So, you know what I'm saying? It just kind of is what it is. And then the week before that, we had the Raiders, and we've seen how bad the Raiders looked on kind of Monday night just to even throw the ball. So... Yeah, when it comes to the Patriots, I think injuries have done a big deal. I think with without the injuries, we elite. But I'm, I'm going to still put us good because I think we haven't looked bad. We've done pretty solid. We've been solid since. So I'm going to keep it good. I'm going to keep it good. The Saints. Now, the Saints is a team that's honestly, I don't know what's going on with them since, like, that streak ended. But it seems like everybody's able to get 20-plus points on them now where they had, like, a streak of, like, 10-plus games where nobody could get 20. Now everybody can. So... They've kind of become even, like, a more offensive-reliant team, which is kind of surprising. Like they, 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 It's kind of interesting. But even 30, back-to-back 30-plus -back points games against them, which is kind of funny. But um, Saints, for the majority of the season, I would have to say is in good. I would have to put them behind the Patriots, though. I would have to put them behind the Patriots, personally. Now, Steelers. Steelers is a team that I think is, as a defense, they have holes in their defense where you can try to exploit. But for the most part, they've done a really solid job as a defense to try to maintain they, they standing. And I think that the Steelers have been a pretty elite defense. When it comes to the Jaguars, they only had 20 points. Um, and you know how good TJ Watt is. You know how good Cameron Hayward is. You know how good that D-line is going to be with even Highsmith on the other side. But... Yeah, um, the thing that's really been a lot better, in my opinion, has been that secondary. I think the secondary is the in hole. I don't even think Mink has been as good as he was last year, but I think the cornerbacks has just been a little bit better, if not a lot better, especially with the Ricky and all that other stuff that's going on with the Steelers. So I would definitely have to say Steelers have to have to go in elite um, for sure for this year because they've, they've held a couple of the uh, better offices down a lot. The San Francisco 49ers. Now, when it comes to the 49ers, their defense, now they did just get Chase Young, so that's a pretty big deal. But with that being said, they're definitely going to go in elite, but they've kind of been disappointing me on defense a little bit, but I think that's really more so on the offense. I think the last two uh, weeks, they, they, we've now noticed there's a, a significant hole in their defense, and you can definitely throw the ball on the 49ers. The only thing that you got to really worry about against the 49ers is that pass rush, but you definitely can throw it on against that secondary, and that's definitely the hole in their defense. You don't really want to run against them, but if you want run against them, you want to be able to throw the ball and open up the run with throwing the ball. So, yeah, they've looked they've looked like especially if you got a top right receiver, you can really you can really attack that defense a lot. It seems like they actually may be hurting a little bit from losing um their coach to the Texans. But I'm gonna still put them in elite, but I think the Steelers honestly have put a little bit in the past couple weeks they've they've kind of been a little bit more consistent as a defense, especially in terms of allowing points against some of the better offenses. Next is going to be the Cardinals. Now, when it comes to the Cardinals, um, 
I'm going to put them in mid. I think they did a pretty decent job again this week, even against the Ravens, where they probably should have let up a little bit more. But Dobbs kind of had some bad turnovers, which allowed them to get some points. And I'm going to be honest, I'm only really putting them mid because they're tanking. I'm, it's just obvious that they're tanking. It's just obvious. I would put them in good for sure if they were serious for the whole game. But it just, it just, it just doesn't seem like they're serious. And if they're not serious, I'm not going to take them serious. I'm going to put them mid. The Falcons. Now, when it comes to the Atlanta Falcons, um, this week, Will Levis, I, I was saying this, bro. I wouldn't be surprised because I'm looking at how people talking so crazy about Will Levis. It's like, bro, I really hope he actually goes out there and play good because I'm like, bro, people going to be like, it's going to look bad this week. No Ryan Tannehill. They, gonna, they talking about they splitting it with Will Levis and Malik Willis. And Will Levis went out there and balled. And I think the Falcons have a really actually good defense. I'm going to put the Falcons in good, even despite the fact that Will Levis went out there and had four TDs. They still only allowed 28 TDs. They only allowed a touchdown a quarter. But I'm going to be honest. The Tennessee Titans is a kind of scary offense because now they have D-Hop. And we all know you got to stack the box against Derrick Henry. As they can just get a quarterback that can throw the ball down the field, attack the defenses with play action. That's going to be a really tough offense to go against. And... I'm going to be honest. That's just a scary team to play against, if I'm being really honest. So, yeah, Falcons, I'm not even really holding that against y'all. There's not a lot of film on Will Levis. There's, you're not really expecting to go against a passing attack like that coming into the week. So, I can't really even blame y'all. I still going to put y'all in good. I honestly would even put y'all above the Patriots in good. But, man, Will Levis looked really good in that in that game. The Baltimore Ravens. Now, the Baltimore Ravens is a defense, again, that has surprised me again, bro. Like, they've been really consistent defensively. Now, this week, they weren't. They kind of gave up a couple more points. That was kind of garbage time for the most part. The, the Cardinals was not able to get out the 10s, so I'm not going to count that too much against them. But I think the Ravens have been one of the more underrated defenses in the league. I would put them in elite. I think that they've been really, really good. Um, I think that their their secondary is able to cause a lot of turnovers. Their blitz heavy scheme, their misdirection scheme, whatever you want to call it, it's been good like this for a couple years. And it doesn't even rely on heavy like elite pass rushers because they can they're gonna call up they're gonna dial up blitzes so that they can get pressure on the quarterback without having that elite pass rusher like a Nick Bosa or Michael Parsons. And then they have those two great linebackers. Now I'm really interested to see how the health is gonna hold up between those two because it seems like Patrick Queen is starting to get injured. Um, and uh, hopefully, um, Bro's name is slipping my mind. But if everybody can stay healthy, I've liked Kyle Hamilton. If everybody can stay healthy on that defense, health is a real big issue with the Ravens year in, year out. I really have high hopes for the Ravens. The Bills. Now, the Bills is an interesting team as well because they have been dealing with injuries for a couple weeks now. But I think that they're still going to be in this elite tier. And honestly, I would eat. I think that that week where they play pretty much. I think the the, the Patriots week. I'm gonna be real with you. On any given week, you gotta understand that anybody can beat y'all. And with uh, Josh Allen having those turnovers, the Patriots was really like able to move the ball pretty consistently and methodically. Um, I'm gonna still put the Bills in elite, and I'm gonna actually put them above everybody that's in elite so far. I think that they're top to bottom a better. Uh, I think the one hole that they actually, I actually will have to put the Ravens above them because I think the Ravens have a better run defense. I think the Bills have, they've been able to been exploited a little bit in the run game a little bit in my opinion. I think the Ravens is a little bit more consistent in the run defense, and yeah, I think they're they they, they, they definitely deserve elite. The Panthers, the Panthers honestly had a pretty decent um, week this week defensively. I expected, um, I've seen the I've seen the Texans go against a lot of good defenses this year, and they was able to put up points. They went against the Jaguars, put up points. They went against the Steelers, put up points. They went up against a couple teams and put up points. The Panthers this week actually showed me that they actually got some, you know what I'm saying? They can actually stick defense when they want to stick defense. So I, I was really happy to see that. I really had high hopes for them coming into the season. They have not looked nearly as good as I expected. But, hey, they I had high hopes coming into the season. They just hasn't looked as good as I expected. Um, but still, I'm going to put them in mid. I'm going to still put the Cardinals above them because I think they've done more. I think they've been more consistent. But I'm not going to put them in trash this week because they actually showed me something this week that I have to get them hope for. This is the power rankings. This is the week-to-week -week thing. And based off what we've seen so far, not projecting what they're going to be in the future. 
Now, when it comes to the Bears, I'm going to be honest. The Bears is another team defensively that has kind of looked better and better ever since that Denver Broncos game. They've just been a little bit more consistent. Now, this week, they played against the Chargers. That's one of the better offenses in the league, one of the better quarterbacks in the league, one of the better running backs in the league. But I'm going to be honest. Their run defense has looked really good the past couple weeks. This week, Austin Eckler, 15 rushes, 29 yards. Now, what did he replace that with? Seven catches, 94 yards in the TD. Just kind of is what it is. But Kenan Allen, eight catches, six. I mean, it's the Chargers. The Chargers have a really, really good offense with Kellen Moore, Justin Herbert over there. They have a really good offense. Um, so I think the Bears have been a little bit better balanced defense. Even still, I'm going to have to put the Bears. Yeah, I'm going to have to put the Bears in mid. Because I think the past couple weeks, even though the Raiders aren't really that crazy of an offense, I think they've they've shown that they, they can be a little bit better because they, they held the Vikings, the the, Va- the Raiders, and they weren't terrible against the team they just played, and the Commanders. So, yeah, I think they've, they're starting to put something together over there at the Bears. I honestly would even put them above the Panthers because I think they've been a little bit more consistent the past couple weeks. Next is the Browns. Now, the Browns, in my opinion, man, I'm going to be honest, this is a defensive team. This is literally a defensive team that has literally been getting wins week in, week out based off their defense. And the only thing that you – I'm going to be honest – Browns, I'm going to be honest, y'all need to run the ball a little bit more in my opinion because all y'all got to do is really not turn the ball over and y'all going to win. Your quarterback went out there and had two picks and a fumble. Lost. So, I'm telling y'all, bro, they can get a they can get a lot of wins just off not turning the ball over. I think they did a really good job uh, against the Seahawks. Seahawks have a really high power offense in my opinion with the weapons that they have, the running backs that they have. So, I really, really think they did a really solid job. It just... Three turnovers from your quarterback is going to be tough to not allow 24 points against a team of that talent. So, yeah. Um, Yeah, I still got the the Browns as the best defense. I think they've been able to be the most balanced defense as the whole year. I think the past two weeks, teams are starting to get at them like the Colts in this team. But even in those weeks, they was able to force three turnovers this week. They was able to force four turnovers last week. So even when people are able to go up and down the field on them, they're able to create turnovers to get their offenses easier opportunities to score points. And those turnovers allow the opposition to have certain drives where they just don't score anything. And, mo- and turnovers is also really big on momentum. Now, the, the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Now, the Dallas Cowboys this week, they looked pretty good defensively. They made the Rams really not be able to do anything for the majority of the game. Now, Matthew Stafford did get hurt in the third quarter of this game, but it was like the late third. But when it came to the, the Rams... McVay really wants to be able to run the ball. He wants to be able to get the ball to those two wide receivers in Puka and Cooper Cup. They could not do so at a high rate. They they was three catches, seven targets for Puka, four catches, ten targets for Cooper Cup. Um, I think the Dallas uh, Cowboys defense did a really good job, whether it be Michael Parsons against that O-line, whether it be get whether it be those corners against those wide receivers, or whether it be that front seven against that run game that the, the Rams are trying to do. I think they did a really good job. And I think... Um, we all know where the uh, Cowboys should be tier wise. It just depends on where they should go in the tier. I don't think, I don't think the Cowboys has as big of a glaring hole the past couple weeks as the 49ers when it comes to the the passing game. So I'm gonna have to put the Cowboys above them. Now when it comes to um, teams like the Steelers, when it comes to teams like the Bills. I honestly think I have to put them over the Steelers as well because I think that the Steelers you can kind of attack their the secondary a little bit more than the Cowboys as well. Um, and then when it comes to the teams like the Bills and the Ravens, I would honestly put them above them too. I, I would honestly put them above them too. When it comes to the Broncos, um, I'm telling y'all, bro, if the, if the MVP really was the most valuable player of the year, Justin Simmons honestly needs some love in this race. This defense without him, this defense with him look completely different. They look like the worst defense in the league when he was out hurt. He comes back. Patrick Sertain is back to locking people up. The defense is back to not allowing a lot of touchdowns. And the defense is back to creating turnovers. The defense is back to getting sacks. I don't know what's going on. But, hey, ever since he came back, this defense has looked tremendously, tremendously better. It's not even looked remotely close. And, yeah, I think that, bro, if this, if, if the most valuable player of the year was actually based off who's more valuable to certain teams, I think there would be ways that you could even try to say Justin Simmons should be in it. I wouldn't vote for him. I ain't going to lie. But, hey, I think he should deserve some consideration in terms of how much different the Broncos look. 
on defense. So, yeah, um, I think uh, the fact that looking at them the past couple weeks, the fact that they were in trash is insane. They have to go up to good now, bro. And I would honestly say they have to be around right here. I think I'm going to put them right there with the Patriots where the Patriots have a little bit of inconsistencies because of the injuries. And, yeah, I think the Broncos definitely look worse. Actually, no. No, no, no. I'm gonna put the Patriots above them because they've. Looked, I think the Patriots at their peak had, did look better with Christian Watson, not Christian Watson, but Christian Gonzalez and Matthew Judon. With them both being out for pretty much the year, it's gonna be kind of tough to really make up for. But even still, I'm putting them in good. I think they've been a pretty good defense, and I think that the injury that they had made them look far worse than they were. The Detroit Lions. Now, when it comes to the Detroit Lions, I think the Detroit Lions is still a very underrated defense. I'm gonna put them in elite. I think there is things in their defense that you definitely can try to exploit. But when it comes to their defense, I think that they've been pretty elite. The only game that they really struggled was against the uh, the Ravens. I think every game outside of that, they've been pretty much amazing the whole year. So, yeah, I, I'm going to put the Lions in elite. I think that's probably the most underrated defense in the league right now, for sure. Um, the Tennessee Titans. Now, the Tennessee Titans is a defense, in my opinion. I like I like their, uh, their D-line, but... Trading Bayard, their secondary was already an issue. You already get rid of your best safety. They still have Hooker, but that obviously does something to their defense. I'm going to put them in mid. I'm going to put them in mid. I'm going to put them at the top of mid, but I'm going to put them in mid. Uh, when it comes to the, the Packers, now the Packers, in my opinion, as a defense, man, Jordan Love has looked way different, bro. He's looked way different. But I'll say this. The Packers' run defense has looked good, but – in terms of the pass defense, I'm going to be honest. The, the Vikings have been able to pass on pretty much anybody. I'm honestly interested to see what they're going to look like when they play against um, play without Kirk for the rest of the year. But, yeah, they've been able to pass against pretty much anybody so far this year. And that's not really a joke. That's just dead serious. You've seen what they did the week before against an elite defense like the 49ers. So I'm going to still put the Packers in good. I'm going to just put them behind the Saints. I'm going to put them behind the Saints. I still think the Packers are good. It's just, man... It's tough. It's tough, bro. Jordan Love has looked. I don't know if it's people he's now on film or what, but man, he's not looked too good the past couple weeks. If week two, first two weeks, he looked amazing. I don't know what he's been ever since then, though. The Texans, the Texans, in my opinion, is still a good defense. In my opinion, where would I put them in though? I think that they're a solid defense. I think they're still trying to get their uh, feet in it. I don't know what I was going to say, but I think they're still trying to get rhythm. You know what I'm saying? I think they're still trying to get rhythm, the consistency stuff down. I think they played good defense this week. I think Bryce Young was able to kind of exploit them a little bit. I think I think the um, I think the Panthers was actually kind of motivated for this game. I think you can kind of tell that because they wanted to get their first win. They wanted to get that win for Bryce. But I think that this, the, the Texans have been a really underrated defense. I'm going to honestly put the Texans right here. I think they've been more consistent than the Bengals. I think they've been more consistent than uh, the Falcons. I think I think this is where they should go. I think this is where they should go. Now, Colts. Now, the Colts is an interesting defense because, honestly, when it comes to the Colts, man, I think week in, week out, you just got, don't really know for sure what you're going to get from them. I'm going to just put them in mid. I'm going to put them in mid. I think that they should really be a little bit better than what they've been. Um, honestly, Colts defense may just be trash. Honestly, it may just be trash because I'm looking at the points that they've been allowing. It may just be trash. I think they was kind of they was kind of trending in the right direction, but I think people is now starting to get film on them and stuff like that, and people are starting to out be able to put points on them consistently and stuff like that. So I'm gonna put them actually in trash because allowing 39 points against the Browns, I don't give a damn if they had a touchdown or not. Man, without Deshaun Watson out there for pretty much the whole game, and that may be even about positive. I don't know, but yeah. It, I don't really know what to think with the uh, Colts. I'm going to put them in trash. They're going to be the first team in trash. Now, when it comes to the Jaguars, I honestly think the Jaguars' defense is not bad. I think it's actually solid. I think it's solid. But the thing is, how good is it? Um, I think they have one of the best pass rushes. I think they have a, 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 a very underrated secondary. I'm going to put them right here. I'm going to put them right here, actually. It's a lot of good defenses in the league. The Chiefs. The Chiefs is an elite defense. I'm going to be honest with you. I think the Chiefs and the Ravens are like, they're literally neck and neck. The Chiefs and the Ravens are literally neck and neck. 
I'm putting the Chiefs right here because I think I think the Chris Jones factor is a bigger factor than really anything on the Ravens. And I like the play the play calling on the Chiefs is damn near perfect. I'm gonna be honest, but top to bottom, whether you want to talk about offense or defense, is damn near perfect. And I think that they're really underrated. I think the Chiefs defense has been pretty fantastic the whole year. And they're honestly, if it's not the Lions as the most underrated defense, I think the Chiefs has like it has a has a chance at being it. I think their chief the Chiefs defense honestly has been better than their offense, dare I say. For the whole season. I think I think they've just been a little bit more consistent. Next is going to be the Rams. The Rams, honestly, is just not a good defense. Um, I'm going to put them in mid to not overreact, but they're just not a good defense. Like, it's just a lot of young guys and Aaron Donald, to be honest with you. They're really heavily relying on Aaron Donald. But Aaron Donald is good enough to get you in mid, in my opinion, because he can break a game. He can break a game. When it comes to the Chargers, the Chargers defense. Now, the Chargers defense the past couple weeks, if I'm being honest, since the first two games of the season, really, they've been pretty solid. I'm going to actually have to put the Chargers in good. I'm going to put them right there with the Jaguars. I'm going to be honest. The Chargers defense has not been horrible. I, I, I'll be honest. They're not been as bad as I have ex- well, they should be far better than where they are right now, but I'm going to be honest. It's definitely not been nowhere near as bad as I was honestly expecting. That's how bad the coach is. The coach is horrible. But they, I, I got to get credit where credit is due. They haven't been as bad nowhere near as where I expected them to be. The Dolphins, um, Jalen Ramsey did come back this week. But I'll say this. The uh, the Patriots have really no wide receivers. And with Kendrick Boring getting hurt, I don't really know what to really say on that, bro. Like, we really don't have no wide receivers. Cringer Boring got hurt. And they still, like, the Patriots are able to still kind of consistently move the ball for the most part. So, I'll say I'll put them in mid. But they should shoot up these rankings as Ramsey gets more games than his belt. That team can be very, a very, 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 very scary team come playoff time if they can keep the health. They just need to keep the health. The Vikings. Now, this is a team that defensively have shot up. Like, they have shot up. They've only had three teams get over 20 points on them, and that was the Chargers, the Chiefs, and the Eagles. Three of the best offensive teams in the league. I'm going to be honest. The Vikings defense is one of the most underrated overall defense in the league because they was literally breaking records just last year. Just picking up Brian Flores has turned him into a competent defense. So, with that being said, with that being said, the Vikings, I'm going to throw right here. I think they've been a little bit more consistent than these teams. I'm going to actually throw these guys down here. I'm going to throw these guys down here because it's looking like too many and good. And I think that's a little bit better. I think that's a little bit better for the whole season. I think that's a little bit better. The Giants. Now, the Giants is a team, honestly, defensively, that's... I don't really know how to really rate it, bro, because they're, bl- they're another team that's really, really blitz heavy. But they really can't stop the run, in my opinion, like at all. So I don't really know what to say on the Giants. I think Yvonne Thibodeau has had a really good season. I think he's in, like, the top five sacks or something like that. But honestly, bro, I don't know how impressive it is. They did a pretty solid job against Brees Hall last week. I expected Brees Hall to have a really crazy game last week. He, he They kind of did a decent job. That's probably the best game all year I've seen them in the run game. But for the most part, I'm looking at these. I'm looking at these games for the Giants. Maybe I'm tripping. The past since week six, Bills had 14 points. Last week, the uh, Commanders had seven points. This week in OT, the Jets had 13 points. So they have a really good three game span where 14 was the most points they allowed, and that was against the Bills. And all these games are with their backup quarterback, by the way. And then a week before that, they played the Dolphins. They held them to 31. I think they had a garbage time TD. So, and then a week before that, they had the Seahawks with 24, where um, I, I remember Bro had a pick six. So that's not even a who defense allowing that many points. Hold on. The Giants may be an underrated defense on my. I may have been sleeping on them. I may have been going to put them way too low. Yeah, I'm going to put the Giants. I'm going to put the Giants in. I'm going to put the Giants at the top of mid. I think that they. I think that they've been mid. 
for the majority of it, but like, I like that a lot of points that they're allowing. They're not allowing a lot of points. I give them that. The Jets. I think the Jets is a good defense. I'm going to throw them at the top of good. I don't think they're elite. I just think they're at the top of good, man. Um, it's just really, really tough for me to put them any higher than that. Really, really tough for me to put them any higher than that. It's just, yeah, it's just really tough. I think they have a solid uh, pass defense for sure. But, yeah, I'm going to just I'm gonna just put them in good. The Raiders. Um, I think the Raiders' defense is a little underrated, but, like, I'm going to still throw the Raiders in trash, honestly, defensively. I, I want to put them in mid out of respect, but, nah, I'm going to put them in trash. I, I, uh, I'm going to put them in mid. I'm going to put them right there with the, with the uh, Dolphins. Next is the Seattle Seahawks. The Seattle Seahawks, I think their defense is coming along strong with the health that they're gaining. I'm going to put the Seattle Seahawks. I want to put them here for now and at, I'm not because I can't project how they're going to be for the rest of the year. Now, I think they have really high highs this year, but they also have some lows. I want to put them right here for now. And then we see how we go as we keep going for the season. And I can keep raising them up. But I want to put them here for now. Whether they're at the top of high or they're at the bottom of me, good. But I'm going to put them here for now. I'm going to put them here for now. The Buccaneers. Buccaneers, in my opinion, are, are, are a solid defense. Um, yeah, I'm going to put them in good. I'm going to put them in good. I'm going to actually put the Seahawks right there, too. I think the Buccaneers have a little bit better pass rush, but I'm going to put them in good. The Philadelphia Eagles. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. The Eagles' defense is kind of sneaky bad. Like... It's actually kind of sneaky bad. Like, you can really put up some yards on these guys. I'm going to be honest. You can honestly put up some points on these guys, too. I think they did a really good job against the Dolphins. I think they was actually motivated for that game, to be honest. The week before, I know they was missing Jalen Carter and they was missing Darius Slay, so I'm not going to be too hard on them for it. But it's the NFL. Injuries happen. They gave up 20 points to the Jets. And let's be honest, that is the Jets. And I think Jalen Hurts did have a couple uh mistakes in that game so i'm not gonna be too harsh on them the defense um the week before that rams hmm. i'm gonna put them right there with the jets i'm gonna put them right there with the jets the commanders yeah they just traded a lot of their uh defense to be honest with montez sweat and uh chase young being gone i think they definitely deserve this trash ranking um, I'm going to honestly put them right here. I think I think they've been one of the defenses all year that you've been able to put up points against. I'm honestly going to put them as damn near the worst defense in the league, especially now that they lost their pass rushers. Their pass defense was already horrible with their secondary. So it's only going to get worse now. So, yeah, I'm going to definitely have to put the commanders in trash at the bottom. So, yeah, we got the Cleveland Browns as the best. We got the Washington Commanders as the worst. If you guys do want more videos like this, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. Without further ado, hey, Put in the comments down below what you guys think is the best defense in the league. Put in the comments down below what you guys think is the best or the worst defense in the league. Put in the comments down below who you guys got the best team in the league, who you guys got the worst team in the league. Uh, if you guys do want more, like I said, like, subscribe. Your boyfriend's out the video. I'm out of it, man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!